What is going on, you guys? My name is Rage, and we are back today with my second day here of Source Satellite. But as well, I do have some footage from yesterday when I wrapped up just to keep it a clean number. Having said that, let's get right to it. Now, if you guys checked out the first time I did this, um, you can actually do the full rebirth team, but because I was wrapping this up yesterday and Super Scroll was one of my last characters, I decided to throw him in rebirth. Rebirth can also get the full floor 21 done as well for your guys' reference here. For floor 22, um, I was just using the last of my straggler characters uh, from yesterday. So you'll see it's kind of a mixture of just characters that did not get utilized, right? Phoenix, Shang-Chi, Doctor Doom, Shuri, and then randomly Cyclops for damage. But um, feel free to slot in any kind of uh, mixture here. But you'll see who the most important characters are. I think Doctor Doom's a good one uh, for this node because he's going to get um, the speed and turn meter um, increase here. And as well, the potent damage that's coming from him. He is only geared tier 16 in my uh, in my current roster right now. So you don't need him too powerful. Powerful, but um, because we're up against this guard, uh, this Asgardian mixture, I didn't think it was going to be an issue whatsoever. And we do have Phoenix uh, dealing some pretty decent damage as well. But what I also like is um, the protection and support that Shuri brings in with this group, and as well Shang Chi having the ability to actually turn meter rewind. But make sure you focus Vow after you take down that left side because of the fact that uh, she can't actually revive. So um, having a character like Cyclops um, that doesn't really slot into the previous team that we used was nice because he can just blast right away and clean up. And then making short work of this node, which is pretty easy to clean up. But again, uh, just sometimes you just need to use some some of your built up characters already uh, mixed together to get the job done, which we did here. Next up, floor 23. Kind of using the mirror matches as a way to, to gauge, you know, the characters and teams that we're building. That's why I've uh, established this you know, pseudo infestation mixture here, but as well using the big time Spider-Man. But we want to start things off by actually using our ultimate there on big time Spider-Man. So that way he does have disruption and the slow as well. He's probably gonna get his turn um, after us, but we want to be able to at least um, go before him. And ideally um, what you want to be doing is using the ultimate here from 2099. And unfortunately with this though, they are going to be gaining charges and so forth here, as you can see. So not much we can do about there. And then you can see they, they get quite a bit of damage in the beginning, right? But ideally the goal is to get our spider weaver using her alt first. So that way when they use theirs, it's gonna miss. But again, we now have the charges so we can kind of, you know, mitigate some of that damage. And now the downside with this is that we do have to go ahead and waste uh, the spider weaver charges now, but same thing with us, right? We have some natural protection, which is nice. And just kind of taking our time with it now. Okay, and finally, you have an opportunity here. This is what I would take advantage of. For 2099, go ahead, ability block their Weaver, and that way she can't be using her charges again. And ideally, we want to be taking advantage of kind of um, the damage that we have, right? There's Their Ant-Man has uh, offense up, but we want to be controlling their big time and then ad additionally going for their Weaver because uh, the Weaver is really the, the biggest pain point here. And I like the synergy here of uh, big time infestation with Black Widow. And now we can go ahead and get the job done and finish it off here. So pretty smooth, but again, we're using a lot of this mirror matching as a kind of conceptual way to build these teams and uh, a great way to utilize Tangle Web here initially for this uh, attack. Floor 24, I believe this is the one I had issues with last time and actually killed a day because um, I didn't do the right mirror match. So I'm using Darkhold plus my Apocalypse. Uh, just to guarantee the win because I just don't want to be dealing with this. Um, so right from the get-go, at least we have the advantage, the cushion of Apocalypse here. Ideally, guys, um, uh, you know, you could probably get away with a mirror match utilizing uh, Quicksilver as well. But I like having Apocalypse here so that way he can get the guaranteed kill. Because you see, we're up against this dark hold mixture here um, with Infinity Watch, right? So I'm going to activate Apocalypse Ultimate. And again, it's just nice that he has that extra uptick in damage, the stun. Um, and as well, we're going to be using his his uh, empowered state to actually finish off Quicksilver. So he's not gonna be an issue for us whatsoever. Um, I still think the full Darkhold team can get it done, but I think it's more RNG based. If you have a massive Darkhold team, um, probably gonna be pretty smooth, but um, uh, mine's mediocre. Uh, gear tier 17 with many of them at level 90. So nothing to, too crazy to write home about. So that's why I want to use my Apocalypse in a meaningful way uh, as we're progressing towards uh, floor 30 here for the second day. Floor 25 here for the boss. Um, and I do believe that Gamma is a very solid team for this just because we're up against a speedier team. But uh, once our Red Hulk goes first, uh, he can be able to use that turn meter rewind to give us the edge here. 
So ideally, um, you do want to be going for the middle. Thankfully, the taunt with Absorbing Man is right next to Kang, so we do actually have uh, that inherent advantage there. But the one thing to be mindful of is that we're also up against an Icarus, so we definitely need to be watching for that ultimate, right? And he's definitely someone we need to be focusing on. Ideally, uh, the more attacks they do, the better, because She-Hulk can actually throw it right back at them. Um, and again, we gotta be watching for Icarus and Kang's damage, just because once they get a chance to go, um, it can be some pretty significant damage, right? So you can see, we have a lot of debuffs on us right now. I'm gonna activate the cleanser, so that way everyone's good to go with immunity. Uh, and that's kind of really, really important, so that way, um, even with Icarus coming, he won't be maximizing on more damage and output, but um, looking pretty, uh, dicey here with uh, Kang getting his turn and then as well Icarus coming pretty shortly here so so thankfully he doesn't have Cersei you basically need a gamma team that's slight, slightly larger similar to my level so that way that flip doesn't completely cripple us and again I am very grateful uh, for the fact that there is no um, Cersei that we're up against. So we're just continually focusing Kang here because if we don't take him down uh, it's giving me bad news bears with his ultimate right so we definitely want to be focusing that in the beginning. A little bit of a longer battle than I like, and again, because we're kind of wanting to get more hits, and, and it can be RNG based, but we want more damage, obviously, on Red Hulk, so that way it can trigger his um, his passive there, and that way it gets the additional turn meter, and that's what we got right there, actually. He's going to get his turn pretty shortly here. We have all the buffs coming, but it's not going to matter because Red Hulk is ready to uh, wreak havoc. So this is pretty much the game changer here. Um, that's why it's, it's going to be opportunistic, dependent. Um, I can definitely see this team failing if you don't get the right RNG, um, especially if it doesn't land the right attacks now. So we're looking pretty good, four out of 10 enemies taken down now, but our Red Hulk's gonna get a turn here pretty quick and then activating his ultimate is gonna completely cripple this team. And I, I really like how uh, Gamma does seem to do pretty well because we got a lot of um, cleanses. Uh, we have She-Hulk's passive protection. And again, um, the turn meter rewind at the beginning is very important, especially up against the Kang uh, team that's speedier, right, with the Masters of Evil. And now that we have the bleeds getting uh, inflicted on this, it's pretty much good game. But yeah, I think Gamma is a really good slot in team for this as you're climbing up towards 430. We, I don't see any other potential good rooms for them. So it's a great way to use them here. And now we're just gonna clean up and finish these guys off. Easy does it. So um, Red Hulk really being the core here. If there's a way that you can make your Gamma team more survivable, I'd recommend it. But um, all my characters were level 90, gear tier 17 uh, for the big apocalypse unlock. Okay, floor 26, first time I'm trying this. We're gonna see if this works because um, it's my uh, pseudo Sinister Six, Superior Six Synergy, but uh, I wanna see if they can actually punch up. This is a pretty big punch up too, but we have a large uh, kind of turn meter advantage and we have plenty of debuffs. So it's kind of what I wanna take advantage of, right? Especially with the offense down here, you see um, my lower uh, characters here are gonna do some really great work, especially with Green Goblin um, and both uh, Doc Ock being very prominent. So you can see here doing a, a great amount of debuffs with trauma is kind of going to be the key. But we do need to shut down Spider Weaver at the very beginning. So make sure you have Craven here on the team because he's going to be very, very essential to that. And now that we got our buffs going and their debuffs set, uh, I think this is pretty much good game now. We're going to have the blinds uh, being applied. And this is a, when the, when you have your uh, superior six and your six team synergy like this, um, it is hard to stop. So you know what I should be doing actually? I'm gonna focus on the healer characters like Squirrel Girl and Shuri because we definitely don't want them to get any kind of cleanse off even though we have the trauma. We just wanna make sure that they're not getting additional healing and support. And especially with their Spider Weaver being um, controlled as well, a very opportunistic moment to clean up this right side. But wow, crazy how much this team can actually punch up even given the fact that many of my characters are only um, gear tier 15, I believe. Um, it's really green, uh, the original Green Goblin Classic here, that's like gear tier 18. Everybody else is 16 or 15, so my goodness. This is an absolute best in slot right now to use. And you can see like even from the, the loading screen, it was like a 1 million punch up when we combine it all with all these characters. So uh, obviously data is a little skewed because they have more um, enemies, but great to see how powerful this team was, my goodness. Easy, easy. Floor 27, we're up against a bunch of mutants. This one just screams home to me, Unlimited X-Men, so that's exactly what we're gonna be doing here. Um, just because, again, when you're not sure, guys, take a look at what the team is gonna be utilizing. I think another good one could potentially be Bionic Avengers if you have them uh, pretty built up, but in this case here, um, we're gonna be countering. So special right away from the beginning, aimed at Rogue to reduce return meter. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the ability block, 
So not ideal, but um, Rogue and Gambit are going to be the priorities of what we want to be taking down. So we definitely do want to be controlling and making sure that they don't get their abilities off. And keep in mind too, they also have a beast, so it's kind of nice that uh, a beast and a dazzler actually. So both of them will be countering quite a bit, but thankfully um, we got our strong Gambit pings here to, to do damage even when we're not going. So um, let's take a look here. Their Rogue hasn't got a turn. Let's go ahead and Billy Block. And there's some nice uh, X-Men synergies here, which, uh, you know, obviously signals in the future that if there is going to be reworks, it's going to be pretty interesting to see how this is going to shake things up. I, I definitely do want to focus my striker on Beast. That way we're going to do the additional strike on him, potentially take him down. Perfect. And now we are going to be focusing Jubilee just to clean her up. But Gambit getting his attacks, let's put a stop to that. So uh, that should be able to clean up Rogue there quite easily. Uh, even though their Dazzler and Sunfire are still up, we've taken down the key targets. And just for good measure, why not? Let's make sure we have a stun. Uh, sorry, a blind actually on Sunfire. Finish him off. And now easy, easy cleanup. So yeah, I definitely think that Unlimited X-Men is a really good team, especially if you guys have already built up this team for uh, Big Boy Apocalypse. Um, the level 90 gear tier 17 is definitely a nice plus. I don't believe that my characters were at this level the last time that we did the Sword Satellite. Um, last time I did with Baby Apoc, so definitely been nice to see these uh, these new additions to the team and the upgrades, right? So yeah, a solid, solid team here, easy cleanup. Okay, floor 28, here we go. Uh, we are just working through our list of Legendary Horsemen team now. Death Seed, I think, is a good one to go up against this because uh, we can take advantage of the fact that there's lots of minions going around. Um, we also have uh, Magneto's Blind here at the very beginning. So definitely a pain point we want to be focusing on is Kestro because she's going to be doing the bulk of the damage, right? So definitely blinding her is going to be a priority. Um, and as well, if we can combo attack on and the, the minion deaths, um, Death, Archangel is going to get his turn meter going here and it's going to be pretty devastating. So um, thankfully we had we do have these horsemen teams built up uh, quite a bit from the unlock of big apocalypse So definitely gonna give us some value there I'm gonna use the special to give us offense up But already from the get-go we got some assisted attacks coming from dark beast and already uh, working with that that passive turn meter there, right? So uh, I am gonna activate the ultimate because I want to do some splash damage on Bucky Barnes and as well as um, Nick Fury now it wasn't, uh, yeah, that, that's the other thing to watch out for too. Captain Sam, um, obviously getting his uh, turn meter increase here for the team. But again, um, I think Death Seed really shines with this um, uh, uh, with this uh, opponent because of the fact that there's so, en so many enemies uh, going around, right? Uh, the moment we take down any of the minions, you know, Archangel is just going to keep going and going. And um, I think that's why this team really is kind of a, a true shiner for, for going through this one. Just when, whenever we get a turn, uh, uh, letting these minions get their turn and obviously do their thing. Um, but Nemesis is absolutely going to wreck Havoc once he has a chance to. And thankfully, the Magneto blind was pretty important. As you can see, they're getting a lot of turns, but missing on their attacks, which is huge. But yeah, just look at the boatload of buffs they've been able to activate. So now, finally, our chance to do the ultimate with uh, uh, Nemesis there. Pretty devastating, but we're getting a lot of retaliation damage, as you can see there. But now Archangel kind of doing his thing um, with his passive and granting, granting energy back. So we definitely do need to be more mindful of what's going on here. So I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to activate the ultimate there to cast back the bleeds on Nick Fury. So that way they're not going to have, you know, some support capabilities. But characters like Maria Hill and Nick Fury um, are very, very important to focus because of the fact that they're providing a lot of support, right? Giving um, them another second wind here to get a supportive buffs and so forth. So we are going to use the special there. Dark Beast, and now this is the opportunity we want to wait for. Um, if you can get the ultimate on Kestro, it's really huge because that's a true game changer there. And because of Dark Beast's special as well, we were able to bring back Nemesis. So um, Death Seed's just a, a true a gem for this node for sure. Okay, so we are getting closer and closer to the end of my roster, but I decided to put this mixture here of some of my Dark Dimension 6 tunes uh, with Venom and as well as Carnage because they're going to thrive off of the turn meter. Uh, anytime you're up against the Hela, is a really great opportunity moment to take advantage. Um, and we also have Val being that extra protection if we need the revives and so forth. So this is gonna be interesting. I've never actually tried this before, but um, let's take a look and see how we do. Now, again, because we can kill Greg, uh, we're gonna keep getting the turn meter rewind here. Um, and it's gonna be absolutely huge, guys. Every time that we finish off Greg, essentially the symbio characters can go again. And that's kind of what we wanna take advantage of. You do not wanna hit Hela too much because we do like her staying around just because of the fact that that greg's going to be uh, constantly going and um and again don't worry too much about um 
obviously uh, fig finishing off Hela because we want to keep her alive, but as well making sure that you can try to get some kills here and there, um, spreading the bleeds and so forth. But ideally, uh, we do need to be watchful of this team though because of the fact that they do have quite a bit of debuffs. We're also up against um, a zombie Iron Man as well. So what I should have probably done is uh, I should have focused zombie Iron Man as well. But uh, oh my goodness, look at the look at the debuffs that we're up against here. Pretty crazy to see. But thankfully, uh, we do have Nova here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just stun him so that way he's not doing some ability control to us. Now we're gonna be picking off some of these weaker characters. Leave that Greg around. Oh my goodness, and me leaving um, Archangel alive was a mistake. But thankfully, um, our Gary Teen Toons are still good to go here. So um, I think I think we're in the clear here. Obviously, the debuffs really hurt quite a bit, but um, now that Hell is taken care of, we can actually take down a uh, Zombie Iron Man. And again, um, although we are a few turns away here, we still have Val's Grieve Vive later on. But why? this is why I like Nova as a character. Even though his Nora team is falling off quite a bit with them um, really only finding value truly in war, um, he has such a great supportive presence that, uh, especially that stun that we had initially just to slow things down a bit, and now we can actually just do our thing and focus on these characters. Um, so there's no way they're gonna be able to take us down. We just got too many debuffs going on and um, that's why I like building characters like Omega Red and Val as well as Nova even though you don't have to build up the whole team. Um, they're great plug-and-play characters as you just saw right here. And this is pretty much the last of my roster here guys so that's why I decided to throw in my super scroll again. Um, again because that earlier note that I did uh, also had scroll from the day before but yeah I usually try to do this at the very end so I think secret defenders the full secret defenders can also work as well but it's pretty it's gonna be pretty important um, for me uh, definitely having super scroll is a luxury on this but um, secret defenders are probably one of the only teams that can get this done just because of the amount of control that they have and you do want to be going up against this uh, this dark hold mixture with, uh, with Dormammu um, you know the best of the best in your roster yeah uh, anything from floor 30 and beyond is really when it's going to start picking up in terms of difficulty hence why we want to go full tilt here so uh we're just targeting morgan Le Fay because we just want to um indiscriminately focus her as soon as possible and now we can focus on the other damage dealers even if dormammu survives um he alone is not going to be able to take us down so uh looking really good here we're just gonna leave wong alone he's not really a threat uh, and now we can actually just turn meter rewind him so that way he doesn't even get his taunt off just to add some bleeds there. But yeah, uh, overall guys, it's because of the amount the amount of initial damage they can have and because we had the turn meter advantage on all these characters uh, is really why um, you know Secret Defenders is a team that shines. Again, you don't need Super Scroll, but I'm just trying to use out the rest of my roster here as we just went through uh, the seven or eight floors um, in this day uh, using the best of my, uh, my team right now. And we're gonna slowly inch our way up, but hopefully this gives you guys at least a reference in terms of the teams that work. But yeah, there you go. There you have it. That concludes floor 30. Uh, so I'll definitely keep recording and go beyond this if I am able to. But last time I was only able to get to floor 34. So definitely going to be interesting to see if I can uh, hit some new records with this event. That's for the second time Source Ally. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Thank you for your time as always. Let me know what you think in the comments below if this has helped you guys push forward. Hopefully you're able to get as high as you can and push forward for the Black Knight Awards. Thank you for your time as always. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.